Good morning, everybody. This is welcome to the 39th Color Lab Convention in Nashville, Tennessee. Today is April the 3rd, is that correct? And this is the session on singing call adaptation. I am Paul Henze, and your panelists today are Mr. John Jones and Mr. Vernon Jones. Sounds like they're acquainted, don't it? Doesn't it? Okay. I've got a little credentials here. Let's see. John is an accredited uh, Color Lab caller coach past chairman of the Caller Lab, and presently chairman of the Applications Review Committee. John calling for how many years now? Fifty-seven years. To my immediate left is Mr. Vernon Jones, is member of Caller Lab Board of Governors, and Vernon calling for how many years approximately? Thirty-three years. Thirty-three years. And I guess both continually out of the Texas area. Right, my panel: Vernon and John Jones. A little hand, please. Now, we will have, I'm sure, questions throughout the presentation, and we'll let them monitor their questions and how we will work it. There is a, a a mic up here. It's an FM mic that can be a hand around mic. Please, all questions, be sure and ask it. State where you, who, what your name is, where you're from and what your question would be. So it goes on the disc for those that are buying the disc through Caller Lab. Let me read today what the tasking was for the committee. All square dance music comes from a cue sheet, which includes the choreography and words from the song as used by the recording caller. There are times when programming considerations such as classes or when calling to new dancers makes it desirable to change the choreography provided with the cue sheet. There are many callers who do not realize nor appreciate the difficulty in doing this in a way which will create well-timed and workable choreography. Now, their task was to provide information about how to create singing call figures, either for an original or to change existing figures on a cue sheet. Now, I was given two things, a timing sheet and also a singing call adaptation sheet. Did everyone get copies of these two? Okay. Vern, was it you or was it John going to start off with information? Do I? You or John go start? Seeing as. Seeing, seeing as, you know, he's not here and just walked out of the door, I believe I'm going to go first. When... Years ago, I, I remember years ago when I first started calling, and I started calling in 1977 or 78. Uh, there were singing calls out there that had the same figure, and you, when you heard that singing call come up, you knew what figure you were going to dance to. And the figures were fun and interesting and and had a little bit, you know, they weren't difficult, but they had a little bit of spice to them. Uh, they weren't the same old humdrum stuff to a certain degree. Uh, I dare say that uh, uh, dancers today probably couldn't do some of the figures in the singing calls uh, that were out back then. Uh, I also remember the fact that uh, if you changed singing call figures back then, you would get hung, and dancers would be mad at you, and they would be upset. Uh, but now it seems like we've gone full circle. Uh, you look in American Square Dance magazine, and they've standardized the singing call figures where they don't even list the figures anymore. They just say it's the standard spin-the-top figure. Does everybody understand what the standard spin the top figure is? Or the standard Ferris wheel figure? They don't even list what it is. They just say standard Ferris wheel figure, and we all know what it is. Uh, back then, and I was lucky enough to do some recording back then, you worked hard and you studied and you wrote interesting figures. Not Again, not hard and not difficult, but interesting and different. Today... If you do one that's a little out of the norm, the record producers are not happy with you because that particular song doesn't sell as well as used to be. Uh, and they'll list the reason as the figure was too hard. And that's always amazed me that 
somebody would turn down a good singing call simply because the figure that was on it was too hard. I remember callers complaining or lamenting the fact that they couldn't do their favorite singing call anymore because Curly Q was dropped from the mainstream program. And since Curly Q was in the singing call that was their favorite singing call, they couldn't do it anymore. And that always amazed me that we didn't, that a lot of us didn't have the capability to just change it to a touch a quarter and move on. I have heard callers lament, or several years ago, excuse me, several years ago, there was a uh, discussion in the mainstream committee, and you know, every three years we talk about what we're going to do, add, drop, subtract, this, that, and the other. And one of the calls that came up for deletion was Do Paso. And one of the big arguments f- for keeping Do Paso and not deleting Do Paso was how am I going to be able to do the singing call El Paso if I don't have Do Paso to put in it? And if you're familiar with El Paso City, it's got a Do Paso in it. And we couldn't think of something else. Well, I, when I say we, I'm talking that particular person couldn't think of something else to put in its place. Uh, callers cried and lamented the uh, when uh, Cross Trail Through was dropped, and a lot of it was because I have a, my favorite singing call has Cross Trail Through in it, and I don't know what else to do, and uh, so they were upset about that. And so, therefore, it's all it's always amazed me that we can't change and adapt. Uh, the figures today, I believe, are, are too easy, and uh, they're not. There's not enough spice in them. Uh, I know it says singing call figure adaptation, but we can also look at changing the opener and middle and and, uh, and closer breaks on singing calls. Uh, we have a lot of singing calls I know that start off with sides face grand square. And if you want to add just a little bit of spice, why not use heads face grand square? It's the same thing at the halfway point of sides face grand square, so don't you know, as dancers, don't tell me you can't do that because, yes, you can because it's the halfway point of the other one. It just adds a little bit of different. It feels different. It's a, st- it's a different starting place for some of them. Uh, after they get uh, a little bit more uh, familiar or comfortable with heads face grand square, you can do simple things simply as boys face your partner's ear and grand square. And has, has everybody ever seen a boys face grand square? It's kind of fun to do, isn't it? And uh, then after they get comfortable with that, you can change uh, and have the girls face your partner's ear and grand square. But changing singing call figures, how many, what, after you do the opener of a singing call, who goes first in the figure? Heads. Why is that? Okay. Have, that's the way it's always done. Have we ever seen any place where it's written that you can't change that? No. no. So if you want to change a little bit, have the side start. That's a different feel for people. It's not hard. It's not difficult. It's a different feel for people. Uh, can can I use heads go first and then the sides go next? Do it all the time. Everybody, everybody understand what we're talking about? We do the opening figure, and then we have the head start, do a figure, and then we do the side start and do a figure, and then we do the middle break, and then who do we start with next? Sides. Does everybody understand why we use the sides and then heads? We use heads, sides, and sides, heads, okay? The reason being is that it changes the starting girls around. Uh, I have had... <laughs> I have had people say that you can't do or it's not proper to do heads and then sides because that has the girls starting the figure off all the time. Because think about it. If you do a heads start off and you swing the corner, that head girl just went to the side man, correct? Then if you do a sides start, that head girl is now do, or that former head girl who is now a side girl is starting the figure again. And people, and people have said, well, that's not proper. Well, if you do two heads, who's doing the figure on the other side? 
the two head guys are going. So if the two, if it's okay for the two head guys, it should be uh, okay for the two head girls. So there's nothing wrong with nothing wrong with that at all at all. Uh, but we were talking about uh, 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 cha- uh, changing figures and uh, saying that, uh, that, that, that that I already mentioned. Oh, I, I don't think I mentioned, but I heard somebody to, uh, at this convention. Uh, say that I really like a certain singing call, but I didn't buy it because I didn't like the figure that was in it. And we and 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 that and I can't believe that somebody is going to not use a particular piece of music simply because they didn't like the figure and didn't have the ability or didn't realize that it was okay to change the figure or put another figure in place of the one that was there. Uh, 99.99% of singing calls out there have a corner progression. Does everybody and everybody should understand what I'm talking about when I say corner progression. Uh, well, that's where you go swing the corner and you promenade home. Years ago, to add a little bit of spice, we used to use, and you don't hear it very often anymore, is a right-hand lady progression. A lot of callers out there are really not familiar whom the right hand lady is. Does there is there any questions on who a right hand lady is or what a right hand lady progression is? Uh, back in the day when I first started, right hand lady progressions were quite prevalent and used quite often, and and they were fun to do. Uh, these days, you don't see them very often. And so, therefore, if you wish, and if you and if you've got the handout, there are two uh, right-hand lady progression singing call figures in them. And so, don't hesitate to use them. But there is a whole treasure trove of right-hand lady progression uh, figures that you can work up yourself using your checkers and your dolls or whatever. If you have a computer program, you can use one of those. I don't particularly like computer programs because I like the touchy feely of moving checkers around and, and sometimes those computer programs can be manipulated but uh, move move things around and use a right hand lady progression now then you've got to be careful though when you have a right hand lady progression that you continue with the right hand lady progression all the way around the singing call uh, if you start branching out and going well I'm going to do a right hand lady progression on this figure and the next figure I'm going to do a corner progression well all you're going to do is change those two ladies back and forth because uh, the, when when if you do a right hand lady progression your partner went over to where your corner's place is and then if you do a corner progression on the next figure you just got your partner back and so then you'll look out and you go oh, I, what in the world did I do wrong and then you'll start worrying about and all this kind of thing so if you use right hand lady progressions continue on throughout the same singing call and you can use the same figure or you can change the figure up it doesn't make any difference and it makes the dancers feel all that feels a little bit different to them because they're simply not used to doing those kind those types of progressions now then if you use right hand lady progressions and you think that's all that's all cool dancers will come up to you and say hey we've never done one that way before that felt really good we enjoyed that and then if you're like me you go well if they really enjoyed that I'm going to give them some more of it and then the next thing you know by the end of the night you've used right hand lady progressions all night long well what's going to happen to them then then they get used to them and it's not different and it's not spicy anymore and it's it's lost it's really good flavor uh so you know really be really careful with that uh we're going to uh uh play some music here in a minute and i'm fixing to turn it over to dad and 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 let him make a short presentation and then we'll play some music and we'll change some figures and show some different figures and this kind of thing and how they can work with the music and uh, we'll have to have a square get up uh, and sorry, I'm sure everybody's tired and this, that, and the other, and I don't see enough females in here to, to make a full square. So I, we're, some of us fellers are going to have to, oh, yeah, no, there's four, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, we have enough to dance, and we're going to put some different figures together and show how they work in some right-hand lady progressions and uh, go from there and see how they fit and adapt to the music and how we've changed some of them. So if you have any questions, be sure and raise your hands, and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. Uh on, on, be sure that it's on the mic uh, because it is being recorded. And if you've, you've heard this old spill before, that uh, the reason we want things on the mic, 
during recorded sessions is because we've heard some really great questions, but we never really heard the answers. Or we've heard some really great answers, but we didn't ever hear the questions that were asked. So uh, if you have a question or a comment or anything of that nature, be sure and raise your hand up. We'll get a mic to you and uh, and make sure that it's, on re- that it's recorded. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to John Jones. Thank you, Vernon. Do y'all mind if I sit? Are you awake? I'm tired. Yeah. Tored. Thank you, Vernon. A g- good explanation of what you're talking about. And pushing the checkers. How many of you do that? All right. How many of you use a timing sheet? How many of you knew that this timing sheet was available to you through Caller Lab? Good. And if you don't use this thing, uh, you're not doing yourself justice, in my opinion, as far as writing figures are concerned. It has become a great concern of mine, and you'll probably hear me talk about it later, that We are almost to a point of wearing out the call square through, square through four. It is unbelievable to me, and I was just as guilty as anybody else several years ago about using it and on recordings and my records that I made, so many of them had started, the figure started out with head square through. And I started thinking about it, and I've been keeping a record of it for the last 15 years through the record review of American Square Dance Magazine. 85% of the singing calls that come out have, have a head square through four as the starting of the figure. 14% have the heads promenade half. And then 90% of the time they do a square through four after that. One percent of the singing calls that are being written today are different. And that's, like I said, that's over the last 15 years that I've been keeping up with it. And so I'm on a worldwide campaign to get callers to start doing something different. Deborah and I have been to dances and especially the national convention and listened to callers get up one right after the other. And I'm talking about well-known professional callers square through square through square through square through both patter and singing Deborah and I have worked festivals with other callers from areas for like two days and I've listened to them and every sequence that they started both patter and singing in three different halls was square through four head square through four And I've said this to this caller's face, and Tony Oxendine has been uh, one of those that he uses it and has used it so very much. And I've discussed it with him and mentioned it to him several times. On the new platinum label that just came out, and I got it the other day, and Tony has a couple of songs on there, and one of them I listened to, and I dropped my mouth. My my, My jaw just dropped down when I heard his figure. Heads make a right-hand star with a full turn while the sides promenade half. Sides come in in square through four. Beautiful figure. Worked really well. And Deborah and I, uh, it, it's to the tune of Grandpa that the judge recorded. And Deborah and I listened to it on the way to Houston, and we had a dance that night. We opened the dance with that singing call. It is a plus dance. And we used his exact figure, the exact words that he said. Now, what he said on the singing call was, heads make a right-hand star with the full turn, sides promenade half. His next word were square through four. The first question that went through my mind was who. And then I listened to it again. I said, very obvious. In our olden days... Whoever was the last couple active were the ones that did the next call. 
So who were the second couple that was active were the sides, and they are the ones that are supposed to do the square through four. And then the finishing calls were right and left through, pass through, trade by, swing, and promenade, which is a corner progression. And I started thinking about it. Because of crowns, I could track what he was doing and watch in my mind what he was doing, doing a mental image of it, it will work regardless of which couples do the square through. The only problem is if the heads do the square through after the sides promenade half, and we saw that happen once, then the corner swing and promenade is only a half promenade, only an eight beat promenade rather than 16. And that ain't would not be the first time that ever happened because we've seen callers write figures time after time after time with an 8-beat promenade, but they've got a 16-beat tag in the song. And they can't figure out why the dancers are at home standing there waiting on them for 8 beats while they're up there singing. And if you watch them, if you watch callers that who do that, and they have that situation happen, and the dancers are already at home and wondering what the next call is going to be, and you look around at the caller, and they're looking down at the table or something like this. They're acting like they don't know the dancers are out there. I don't know why. I haven't figured that out yet. But we're still trying to analyze why callers would do that. I know why they do that. They haven't used their checkers to see where the promenade starts. All they know is it works in their mind, or they heard somebody else do it, and so they put it on a singing call, and it's only an eight-beat promenade. Now, when I learned to square dance, we were taught that if you got back home and the caller was still singing the chorus line or the tagline of the chorus line, you swung your partner at least twice. We had plenty of time to do Oh, we did lots of swinging, and it was fun. You know, we didn't stand there and wait for the caller to call something else. And I still do that today. If I'm dancing with a lady that is a good swinger and I get back home, it, especially if I'm a side couple and I know the next figure is going to be with the heads and he's probably going to do a square through because that's 85% uh, of what's going to happen, I'm over here swinging with this lady. I don't I Let the heads go ahead and do their thing out there. And uh, there ain't nothing like swinging with a good swinger. And it's really fun. <laughs> now, that could be interpreted two different ways, and you did. You automatically, you went right in the gutter on that. <laughs> no, but if I find, if I'm dancing with a lady and she's a good swinger, I want to swing. And Deborah's a good swinger, so, and Kayla's a good swinger, and, and we just do. Terrific. There ain't nothing like it. Callers have quit teaching what needs to be taught, in my opinion, to make good dancers out of our people. Uh, uh, that's to be a whole other subject. The paper, the handout that we have given you, uh, is out of our syllabus that Deborah and I use at caller schools. And you have to look and read and do these things. And if you look on the second page, down at the bottom of the, the second... To, Next to the last paragraph on that second page, the last line, Deborah uses a song called, uses Rocky Top to work in her mind whether a, a, a figure is going to work or not. And I use Just Because, because I have decided a long, long time ago, it's an easy song for me to sing, and I work out singing call figures to the tune of Just Because in my mind or a cappella or whatever I might happen to be to use and we have had record producers tell us time and time and time again that if you write a figure that's different it won't sell and I said you've got to be kidding me and they said no it's a known fact and I said well it's our fault as caller coaches and caller trainers that we have trained callers to not be creative. It used to be years ago in doing singing calls that callers spent a lot of time writing a figure that was a little bit different from what everybody else had done. We never copied the same figure that anybody else had put on a singing call. That was an 
an unknown immoral thing to do. You stole my figure and put on your singing gun. Callers would get upset about that. And so we were very particular with doing that and trying to do figures that were different. How many have ever danced the old singing call that Dick Jones recorded to Running Bear? Has anybody danced that? We will challenge advanced or challenged dancers that have never danced it before that we'll bet them 100 bucks they can't get through it the first time. And it has nothing in it but basic calls. It's the way he put it together. It's really, it, it's a basic call that dances like C4 is how I could compare it to. You've heard Round Dance Cures say this is a phase two that dances like a phase four. That type of thing with running bear, it's that way. And it's such a neat call to it. Once you understand the figure and learn how to do it, it works really well. Vernon and Deborah and I, all three, recorded a song a few years ago uh, on Desert Gold for Ron Marcus to the tune of No Bad News. And we wrote a right-hand lady progression figure to that call. And caller said, don't buy, won't buy it because don't like the figure. Can't do the figure. I thought, wow, it ain't that bad. I don't remember exactly how it goes. Do you, Vernon? I can't recall for sure. Heads promenade three quarters around while the sides right and left through with a full turn around to face the outside too and circle to a line. And then we did a pass the ocean. And then we wound up uh, doing a, a swing through and an AC Ducey. You could call AC Ducey at plus, but we wrote it for main change. Swing through, in circulate, centers trade, swing this girl and promenade. That's the words we put in it. Swing this girl and promenade. The review came out, swing your corner and promenade. Ah, I went up in smoke. <laughs> We wrote it specifically as a right-hand lady progression, and why we said swing this lady in promenade, we didn't identify her. Because dancers will panic sometimes if you say swing the right-hand lady. Well, who the heck is she? Yeah, well, I don't know where she is. Well, she's right there in front of you. Because we don't do that near enough. We're scared to death of a right-hand lady pro progression for some reason. Look at the figure that we have right up above there in that middle page where we're uh, emphasizing split circulate. Follow me with this. Heads touch a quarter and the head boy run. Touch a quarter now, split circulate for fun. Boy running now past the ocean here and swing through. Two by two and the boy run right in half tag. You balance and you there, split circulate from here. Swing the corner, lady around and you promenade. I'm to the tune of just because. I'm telling you, honey, I'm through with you. Because, just because. And it, that's how we work out singing calls. It will work to any 64-beat routine singing call to do that. But some callers, man, I could call that to my dancers and they'd break down. If we don't do square through, swing through, boy, run, Ferris wheel, they're lost. Every tip, holy mackerel. We've seen it happen time and time again. Start thinking on your feet and start writing things that are just a little bit different. I've seen callers that open up their computer, every patter routine and every singing call routine in their computer started with a head square three, four, and they call their dance like this, reading the computer. We've seen it happen too many times. Start thinking, okay? That's the point we're trying to get across to you. Ready? My turn. Can I get a square up? I'm going to sing a song. So can I get a square, please? Yeah, we can move chairs back. Don't be in a hurry because the slower we are, then that means the less time that I have to stand up here and talk to y'all. Okay. 
All right. I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm gonna sing a whole singing call now. Then it is still morning time, and I haven't warmed up or anything. So if I squeak or whatever, that's not my normal voice, and I I use that excuse at every dance I call. Do what? WD forty. That that will that will loosen up the grease. <laughs> Hello. Since Vernon mentioned that, have any of you ever heard of a product called Singer's Saving Grace? Fantastic for the throat. You can get it at Whole Food stores or a health food store. It's a Singer's Saving Grace. It's a throat spray. Uh, I'm going to give several several examples during this uh, this singing call. Now, this singing call, it was the music that you just heard, and it's called Brandy. Uh, it happens to be one of my favorite songs uh, during the pop era of the 70s when I was in high school, and then that was a while back. But it is also one of Kayla's most favorite songs uh, back from our high school days. And then we went to the same high school at the same time. She was a year younger than I was. Still is. Yeah. Yeah. And so I use it. And, uh, and, and I'm, and I'm also going to explain a little bit about what I talk about when I, when I do this song is because it's kind of a showmanship thing. And I know this is not the showmanship panel, but isn't it funny how all this stuff kind of intertwines and intermingles with it, with each other. Um, uh, this is, a, and, and I do, and I do just exactly what I just got through doing. I tell the people that I'm going to do a song that, that's my favorite song and that's Kayla's most favorite song and, and this type of thing. But I also want you to keep in mind that I'm telling a story when I'm singing this song. And, and I'm not advocating anything. And, uh, I'm telling a so- story and I'm quoting words from the original song. And it's a song about this girl who lives up in the Pacific Northwest. And it's, uh, you know, back uh, back a while. It's not recent. And you can relax just a minute if you want to. Uh, it's not a recent song. It's it's an older song. And it tells a story of a, of a female uh, girl who works in a tavern. And, and what do they sell in taverns? They don't, they don't sell candy. Well, you know, they sell, they sell beer and ale and other things. And so... I'm singing a song and telling a story. I'm not advocating the use of alcoholic beverages at square dances. And I was calling a dance here several months ago, and there was a lady in a square back yonder, and, I'll, and I will point to that square back there. And and there's always some lady who go, well, you know, was it me? And they go, of course, I'm making this up as I go along. Of course it wasn't you. But I will, won't make on. I'll, I'll look at her and I'll say, it wasn't you, but it was in that square right back there. And she came up after the song was over with and pointed her finger in my face and started wagging it, talking about how we don't use alcoholic beverages at square dances. And I was advocating the use of alcoholic beverages at square dances. And I want you to know right now, I don't do that. I'm just singing a song and telling a story. And then I'll start the music and... And while it's playing, I will say, and if it hadn't been my mother, I'd probably hit her. <laughs> and usually people laugh. <laughs> and it, it wasn't my mother because my mother wasn't there. Anyway, we're going to, I'm going to start off with the first, the, the first thing I'm going to do is, that, is we're going to do a grand square. Now then, remember what I said about science face grand square? What are the odds that I'm probably not going to do that? Pretty good. Okay, so be ready for that. Then I'm going to use another figure, which is the figure that I use in Brandy all the time. It, whenever I you hear, whenever you hear me do Brandy, I do this figure. Okay, so, but the second figure I'm going to do is I'm going to do a variation of the standard spin the top figure. And we all know what that is, yes? Which is head square through four, do si do to an ocean wave, swing through, spin the top. What's the next thing you hear? Well, guess what you ain't going to hear now. So get ready for that. It's going to be a subtle change. Not hard, but it is going to feel extremely different. Okay? And it's not going to be square through three, Virgil. It's not going to be square through five either. Ha ha. But it's going to be a subtle change. Uh, then we'll do, then we'll do the, 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 uh, the middle break. And then I'm going to do two more figures. Of, uh, of, uh, of, of different singing call figures that I use. And, uh, and, uh, one of them is going to be 
a smidge tricky, not a lot, a smidge tricky. And the other one is going to be a star figure, which I, I love star figures. And But it's going to be a little bit different, and so don't fix it. Okay? Do what now? You, you need to sit No, you don't need to sit down at all. All right. So here we go. You're not you're not going to break it down, okay? Heads face Grand Square. There's a port on a Western Bay, and it serves a hundred ships a day. And lonely sailors pass the time away and talk about Alamand and Weave, and they hear them say, "Brandy, you're a fine girl." What a good wife you would be Swing promenade And my life, my love and my lady Is the sea Heads touch quarter here That boy run right Then a right or left through Touch quarter Scoot back Boy run right Reverse flutter wheel And flutter wheel Right about here, California twirl. You promenade, you know, but my life, my love, and my lady is the sea. Okay, head square through four. Standard Ferris wheel figure. Swing through. Spin the top. Excuse me, spin the top figure. Pass through. Bend the line. Go forward and back. Square through three. And it times out perfectly. Swing that corner and promenade. But my life, my love, and my lady is the sea. Heads face Grand Square. And there's a girl in this harbor town. And she works a laying whiskey down. There's the bad word. They say, Brandy, fetch another round. She serves them Alamand and Weave. You know she hears them say, Brandy, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be. But my life, my love, and my lady is the sea. Side square through four. And I'm just using the square through because it's going to get a little difficult here in a minute. Make a right-hand star. Sides come into the middle and reverse flutter wheel. And watch how this times out. Pick her up, bring her back, sweep a quarter, and get out the way. Heads you square through, get me four nine. There was that squeak. Swing that corner, lady round and promenade. But my life, my love, and my lady is the sea. Sides square through four. And I'm using lots of square throughs, but I'm not worried about that right now. Make a right hand star. Side star left. Keep your star and pick up your corner, arm around, and star promenade them. She ought to look familiar to you. Back out and circle left. Boys, swing the nearest girl and promenade in my life. My love and my lady is the sea. And we'll go ahead and finish it. Heads face Grand Square at night. When the bars close down and Brandy walks through a silent town. She loves a man. Who's not around? She still can hear Alamand and Weave. You know she hears them say, Brandy, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be. But my life, my love, and my lady is the sea. Swing her at home twice around. Yes, my life, my love, and my lady is the sea. Nice dancers. Nice dancers. Okay, Paul says he has a comment right quick. Did you notice that he let the music work for him, but it also gave the person doing the figure the first beat? Now, you have to be honest from time to time. Don't we take the first beat? He gave the dancer the first beat. Did you get? Did you catch that? Very important. Thank you. Uh, does everybody understand what he means by giving the first beat? Don't be ashamed. if you uh, Raise your hand if you don't. Too many, let me see if I can find... There's a certain call, like I know that everybody, it's called, what is the name of that thing? Oh, yeah, it's called I'll Fly Away. <laughs> Let me, I, I don't know how, yeah, here it comes. Okay, here's how you hear callers do I'll Fly Away all the time. 
All four ladies chain across the ring. Now turn the girl and then roll away. Join hand circle left. Go rolling by the ring. Roll away. Alamana left and weave the ring. Boys, this is good, isn't it? I'll fly away, oh glory. I'm, I'm off beat. Swing and then you promenade her when I... Oh, wait for the figure. It gets to know you howling by. I'll fly away. Head to couples, promenade half. Look at them going around the middle and then square through four. That's the way callers do it. All the way and then swing through the outside too. Boys run to the right and Ferris wheel. Well, now the center square through three quarters round the ring. Look at him run. Swing the corner girl and promenade. I'm singing on the beats of music. They should be dancing, aren't I? Here's the difference. Ah, fly away. Heads promenade halfway. Boom, and they got the first beat to go. Down the middle and square through four hands round the ring. All the way around and now swing through the outside too and then boys run right and Ferris wheel my friend standard Ferris wheel figure square through three hands three quarters round the ring swing the corner later round don't promenade you don't know how to do that and stop at home do you understand the difference okay we as callers we sing when we hear the first beat, when we should be giving the dancers the first beat, and the dancers are crying, songs have a get ready, get set, and go. And dancers hear that. When you, do you go? Did you hear when you could go? Okay, it's very easy to it's very easy to hear that. Dancers are crying for it. You can use it. Get ready, get set, and we go. And then you hear that first beat. And and we as callers should be giving the dancers. Uh, that first beat, four ladies chain across, and you'll and you'll be back home. Thanks for bringing bringing that up, Paul. That was that's an excellent point. I guess it's, it's a topic for another discussion, uh, but it's one that we hear all the time, and we hear that in pattern music all the time. Pattern music's the same way. Dancers are crying for the first beat, and and we should give it to them. Have you ever called a singing call or patter sometime, and you'll hear somebody stomp their feet? Or, you know, just one time. It's because we gave them the first beat and they felt it. And it's fun and it's enjoyable. So work on that. I use a lot of square throughs on, on, on those figures. And I don't usually use a lot of square throughs. But I just didn't want to be clouding and muddying your mind with, 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 uh, other th- with that kind of thing when we were worried about the other th- kind of things. What can we use in, in, in lieu of square through four? Well, head couples make a left-hand star to the corner. Left hands, left hands, that one, there we go. Yeah, and then look which hand is available when you get to the corner. I'll be darned, the right hand is available, so we can go right into a swing through or a dose of dough or whatever. Don't do it. We don't have. We know how to do all that. Uh, will doing a right-hand star get me to my corner? Heads make a right-hand star, go. To the corner. I'll be darned, we're in front of the corner, but which hand's available? Left hand, so you got to be careful with that kind of thing because if you start doing swing throughs and, and you got your right hands joined, then you have to start bringing up hands and it's uncomfortable. So be careful with your hand availability. Uh, what how, head couple head couple head couples? Here we go. Here we go. Here we're going to show you how how easy it is to change something up. Uh, head couples make a left hand star. That sounds pretty easy. Left hand star. Then we're going to go to the side couples and swing through. And then we're going to do a boy's run and then a Ferris wheel. And then I, from here, I would do a center's right and left through and then square through three. So do a center's right and left through. Do I have to say center's right and left through? No, yeah, no because they're the only ones who can. So I should just be able to say right and left through, shouldn't I? Okay, square through three. One, two, three. And then, then we would swing the corner and promenade. Okay. We don't need to do that. Okay, head couples face back into the middle again. But what if I use a right-hand star? No, head face back into the middle, you're at home. Head couples make a right-hand star. What can I change now? Go to the corner, go to the corner, stars turn, and do a left swing through. And then girls run left, and Ferris wheel, and centers right and left through. I've heard that before, it's uphill, and then square through three. 
So we used the same figure, didn't we? We just changed the hand availability with it. Okay. Heads face back into the middle because you're back at home. Now then we're going to, instead of the right and left through with that type of Ferris wheel, what we refer to as the uphill Ferris wheel, we're, we're not going to do a right and left through and uh, square through three, but we're going to change it up just a little bit. Uh, but it's also going to change the amount of beats that are in the music. So I'm going to have to add something. And so I will add this. Heads go forward up to the middle and back. And make a left-hand star go find the corner. Girl, be sure it's the left hand. Oh, I, I messed up. Back by the right. Make a right-hand star. That's the one I wanted to use. Thank you very much. To the corner, girl. And then find her left swing through. And here we go now. Girls run left around a boy. And then Ferris wheel around my friend. Sinners veer right. Sinners veer left. Swing the corner, girl. And then and it walks right into it. Subtle things that you can do to uh, chain singing call figures. What is another uh, equivalent to square through four? Star through and California twirl, sure. Uh, here's here's one that we use quite often. Touch a quarter, and those boys run. Why did I say those boys run? Exactly. Have y'all ever have y'all ever seen that? Everybody understand what I mean? You ever seen you seen the heads touch a quarter and the boys run and have the side boys run? When do I quit talking to the heads? You mean the next call that everybody the next call that everybody can do? Yes. Okay. Well, can the can can everybody do a boys run? Yes. And the answer is yes. yes. So you've got to be careful with that. You've got yes. until until you get to a point where you want to you know have everybody go. You've got to be careful with that. Okay. Heads face. I got off track. Heads face back in. Watch the body flow for everybody on this. Heads touch quarter. Those boys run. And touch a quarter. Okay. Do you see anything wrong with that? I saw two things. Or one thing wrong with that. Okay. Can everybody square up right quick? You had a hand up. What? And I'm. I, I'm going to repeat what you what you say because it's too hard to give you the mic. What did you see wrong? Yes. It was two rights. Okay, not it, it was a touch a quarter with the right, and then the boys run, and that negated the right, and then we went to a right again. Okay, but that but and, and so that's okay. Uh, but heads touch a quarter. Watch the head girls in the direction they're going. Okay. Boys run right and touch a quarter. Look how they've got to stop and go oh and come back. Can you see that? Can you see? Exactly, and we do that to the girls all the time, and they've learned, and I heard Jerry Junk coin the phrase, they have learned over the years to do a round dancing maneuver called rock and recover. We, we, we've called star through and veer left enough times over the years, which is terrible body flow for the ladies. They have learned to do a rock and recover, and if you don't think star through and veer left is terrible body flow, do a star through and veer right, and boys, tell me how y'all feel it, think it feels. It doesn't feel very good. But the girls have learned to do a rock and recover. Okay, go back home right quick. What is something better to do? Heads do a left touch a quarter. Now watch the body flow here for the guys. The guys, you're going to be sliding left, and the girls are going to be running left. Okay, girls, run, uh, head girls run left and touch a quarter. See, those boys were coming to the left, which made their right hand. It's screaming to, for a right hand. Can, do you, does everybody understand what I'm saying? It's screaming, use my right hand. So, and the, and the point that I want to, that I'm simply wanting to make on that kind of thing is that when you start changing your figures, be sure you look at body flow for everybody, not just you. Because a lot of times for the ladies, it's very uncomfortable and very bad body flow. Dad, I'm, a, I'm a giving it to you now. Oh, he was, she was saying that I did a good job of demonstrating something that, are you speaking of the, de the, the Detroit National this past year? I was not there. I was not in Detroit this past year. Yeah, at Louisville, we did that. Yeah, the year before last in Louisville. Where, uh, we all did. Vernon was involved and Deborah was there. Yeah, we did two sessions in Louisville. We're supposed to do one in Spokane this year. Okay, good. It was clarified in Louisville where we did styling sessions.
birds, and we're doing a birds of a feather on styling today. Yeah, uh, Vernon, Deborah, Kayla, and I are doing a styling session this afternoon at five fifteen. So pass the word, bring some people. Yes, very similar to what we do. Of course, we don't have much, don't have near as much time. Uh, let me see if this is going to play. I'm not. Plug, plug me, in, pull you out, and put mine in. That didn't sound very good on the recording, did it? <laughs> Take your recording plug out and put my recording plug or play cord in. Let me see. Are you ready? Heads left, touch a quarter. Head boy, run left. Touch a quarter. Head boy, run right. Sides, touch a quarter. Tide boy, run right. Sides, left, touch a quarter. That didn't work, did it? Square you set. called it incorrectly my mistake overs it'll play in a I'm just right into the figure heads left touch a quarter head girl run a left everybody left touch a quarter balance Split circulate. Girl on the left. Dixie style to an ocean wave and now. Boy tray. Left cast off three quarters. Girls fold. Boys pass through. Swing and promenade. I'm telling you, honey, I'm through with you. Because, just because. And if you notice that I was a little bit behind on getting that delivery out into the right place, and they were not at home yet when they finished when I, the music had played already 64 beats. So it's got to be, a lot of times, something that's that different has to be practiced, perhaps in your patter, before you call it in your singing call, to make sure that your dancers are going to be able to do it. Let's see, now I'm ready to, and I want to show you that figure that Tony recorded, and it was very interesting that after he recorded it, and I mentioned it to Jerry Story, and Jerry said, I the one gave it to him. <laughs> Tony said, boy, I spent a lot of time working that figure out. <laughs> it's on recording. Oh, I, maybe I shouldn't say that, but I did anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. This way. Sides touch a quarter. Side boy run. You touch a quarter. Split circulate for fun. Boy run right and now. Past the ocean here. Swing through. You go two and two and now. Boy run. Half tag. Balance. Split circulate. Swing and promenade that brain. Well, I'm telling you, honey, I'm through with you because. Just because. And that worked out pretty good there. You know, you get the timing in the right place, and it works out real well. So you don't have to do this. As I was saying earlier, we have had very experienced callers say, I don't know how to change from a square through to something else. And like I said, it amazes me and Deborah as to why we don't know how to do that. Cecil, you had your hand up. I'll have to repeat the question. I had already done, yeah, I had already done one figure ahead of it, Cecil. So, I, yeah, I'm at the halfway point. 
basically what I saw was you got uh, you were I'm off I'm on I, you're on you want to tell me who I am I'm Cecil Burton from Oklahoma but basically I didn't see you were already rented but I thought you was halfway off because you didn't have your corner you had your opposite lady okay no we we had already they stayed where they were after that first figure so they didn't move all right but this is how you can adapt now as Vernon was talking about I. From the old school, I steal that first beat from the dancers a lot of times. And I, I don't write right up on top of it. But I do not do, as Vernon demonstrated a while ago, head two couples, now you're going to promenade halfway. I've taken six to eight beats away from the dancers that they should have already been going. And you've got to get heads promenade halfway. Get it out really fast because it doesn't take that much time to say these calls. Now, the last figure that we have on the back side of our handout is very, very close in timing. And so it needs a pre-prompting to make it work out okay. All right, are we ready? We're going to try. I'm going to see if I can pick the tune up and get it going. Here we go. I hope. Let me back it up just a little bit. Ah, come on. All right. Because, and now the hit, four couples promenade halfway. Heads left, touch a quarter. Head girl run left. Everybody left, touch a quarter. Split circulate. Girls run left to a Dixie style to an ocean way. All eight, circulate. Left, single head, right. And that's the kind of thing you've got to watch for if you're going to, you don't want to jump up and do something like that cold turkey on the floor like I did with you guys because you weren't looking, you weren't looking for it. It was very, very different type situation. And so callers are scared to death to workshop these kinds of things with their dancers to get them into where they can do it. All right. Uh, go back home. Square your set. Back to your home. I'm sorry. All right, four couples promenade halfway. And the heads left touch a quarter. And the head girl run left. And left touch a quarter. And split circulate. And for you callers, this is a right-hand lady phaser that we're in. Single hinge, it's with the left. Boys run left. Boys fold. And who you're looking at? Heck, maybe I left something there. Oh, I see what I did. I see what I did. Square set. We got to go again. We got to go in. Dummy me. I'm so sorry. Yes. All right, I, I I did it wrong again. I don't. All four couples promenade halfway. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to get it right this time. And the heads left touch a quarter, and the head girl run left. Everybody left touch a quarter. Split circulate. Girl run left. Dixie style to an ocean way. Yeah, and all eight circulate. That see. And that this is this that's muscle training. The body is trained to do what some people just did on the circulates because they've never done it from that except from that one arrangement every time. Yes, yeah. come up here for a second. Ken Britton, Montgomery, Alabama. A uh, question: uh, I heard you do a ladies' run left, and uh, I was just wondering: is it necessary to say ladies' run left or just ladies' run? In that particular case, a lady's run is quite sufficient, but I, I did that as a helper word. All right. Uh, what did I call last? All eight circulate, was it not? Yeah. Left single hinge. Boys run left. Boys fold, and you all should be looking at your right-hand lady. All right. 
and that's a right hand lady progression that we have going with that particular piece, okay? All right, square your set. So that's what you got to be aware of and look for and make sure that your dancers know how to. There ain't a darn thing wrong. It used to be standard practice for us callers that we workshop the singing call in the patter part of the tip. Yeah, let's get get it on it. Do you workshop it at the beginning of your patter, or do you wait till the end? All the way so through the patter tip. I will okay. workshop the the type of thing that I'm going to do in the singing call all through all the way through the patter tip. That will be my theme for the patter, is to get the dancers to where they can comfortably dance that routine of the singing call, because it's different. There's not a darn thing wrong with it. It's just a little bit different to, from the, the normal of what everybody's used to doing. And so it just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of help on the caller's part to get the dancers through it. Any other questions or comments? Dancers, would you like to sit down? You've been standing up. You've been on the floor for a little bit. Nice hand for the dancers, gang, if you would, please. If I could, uh, just one one comment, uh, Kim Britt, in Montgomery, Alabama. In your uh, in your uh, handout, you talk about doing either left progression or right progression. You know, and you keep it consistent. Uh, after thinking about that, I was I was wanting to suggest that you might could do a left progression or a right progression two times in your middle break. Do a, a side ladies chain and then progress the other direction. I don't know if that'd be too confusing, but I think it would work. Well, you could, you'd have to have the four ladies chain. Well, just two ladies because you want to get the partner to get to that first. And then you want the side ladies to come in, but otherwise you don't have any I think it would require an all four ladies chain. Uh, but uh, to make it go back the other, to make both couple, all four couples go back the other direction. If you do a right-hand lady progression twice and then you switch it to a corner progression twice, you're dancing with the same two ladies, but you'll get back correct, get back straightened out. But if you if everybody, right-hand lady progression twice, everybody's got opposite at that point. And uh, to progress to the other two ladies, you'd have to do a corner progression at Maybe if you got to square up, the, you could look at it. But uh, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm thinking is, is that if you're you're half you're halfway across, you know, when you go halfway through. But if you were going to reverse the progression, if you did four ladies chain, then you're back with your partner, and you're going to when you progress two positions, you're going to end up with your opposite is the final. That's why I was suggesting just do a side ladies chain. Let's check it. Could we make a square again real quick and, and uh, see if we can verify what Ken is saying? Yeah, we've got about five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, four ladies chain. That would be where we would be. Correct, Ken? If we had uh, either side, if we went corner progression or right hand lady, we would progress it. Okay, now you want the side two ladies to chain across here? Side ladies chain across. All right, then what are we going to do? Wait a minute, we need to come up and get on the microphone. You would have gotten to this position from either a right progression or a left progression. Okay, so if you if you do, for example, two left progressions, where do you end up? If you do two two corner progressions, where do you end up? Well, the side ladies would be with the opposite then, because see the way there, the side ladies are back with their partner right now. And if we did two corner progressions from here, then the side ladies are going to wind up with their opposite. See, I went from there to the right hand. Yeah, they would. You see, because this is Kayla's partner right here. She's at home. So that's what you have to be careful. That's what you have to be careful with. All right. Okay. 
it's it's a, it's it's an interesting concept. If you have four, you know, you, you start off at home, and you do two right hand lady progressions, and then during the middle break, you get you chain them back to their original home, some in some form, and then you do two corner progressions. You still would be dancing with to, uh, the two other different ladies, but then in the, at the end break, you would have to you have everybody would be with opposite, and then you would have to do some kind of a ladies chain back again. But that's that's an interesting uh, interesting idea, and it would feel a little bit different and then uh, I will probably have that uh, before long. <laughs> well, you will, may put that in the next singing call. You know, <laughs> to work, but yeah, it's, that's the way to work out something out in that regard. You, you want to Question. Jay Haynes from Pennsylvania. Uh, I've read someplace that, um, or you, you should know, callers should know, that not all singing call figures will work with all singing calls. Um, I don't understand, okay, because I typically will take a choreography, figure choreography that I know works, and use it regardless of what singing call I plan to to sing. And what should I be looking for to understand that sentence? Uh, In most cases, it's the word metering of how the figure is put together to make it fit a different tune. In my opinion, that's what it would be. Vernon, do you have a no, Okay. No, you, pardon me? Well, I don't, don't know. I can't think of one offhand is what I'm trying to do. That, that, last, that last figure that I was putting to that, sing, to that singing call would be a good example because I had to change the word metering and prompt the four couples promenade halfway around. Are you putting them all words in? Yes. <laughs> Correct. It, uh, the, the question was, are you putting more words in? In most cases, yes. I'm, I'm putting in helper words ahead of the dancers so they can understand what's going, what's coming next. To the rhythm, to the rhythm of the music, right. Trying to stay within the word metering of the phrasing of the music as well. But I've already worked out the metering for this particular figure, and I know I've added the helper words that I, need, I know the dancers are going to need. Every song has got eight beats. Okay, uh, per per phrase. Uh, so I've got me, uh, helper words that bring it to the end of the eight beats. So I don't quite understand why I have to change it when I go to a new song. Change the helper words or change the metering. I don't understand that. It's quite possible that you would not have to, in, in my opinion, except for the uh, lyrics of the song itself, perhaps, on the chorus line. Of the promenade line, you know, you may have to change the word metering of the lyrics to fit the, the particular piece of music that you're using. But that would be the only thing I can think of. Yeah, the figure it should, should work. The figure should work. It's the tag right. line you're talking about. And it's just like so many callers use that standard Ferris wheel figure or the standard spin the top figure that Vernon was talking about because the word metering of the calls fits so well with every 64-beat singing call. They just fit perfectly, and that's why a lot of callers use it. Yes, uh, Jerry Wilson from Virginia. Uh, El Paso City is an example of, of what might that be difficult. That mic's not on. Uh, El Paso City is is uh, an example of of uh, uh, difficult because of uh, the do paso. Trying to to fit another singing call or another figure into that and make it fit with with do paso uh, is just difficult. The one of the main reasons is, and callers don't realize this, that El Paso City is a six eight rhythm song. It's not a two four nor a four yeah, four. Absolutely, and it creates a li- a totally different feel. And the word metering is not easy to do to 6-8 rhythm. It takes a lot of work on a caller's yeah. part. And perhaps that could be a, a, an answer for you. But that would be my suggestion because it is a 6-8. And, and everything doesn't meter to that. Head you promenade. Uh, what, no, the standard figure. Head square through the four you go walking around the floor. When you meet your corner, do I do around you go. If you're trying to use that standard spin the top figure that Vernon was using there a while ago. And the word metering doesn't fit with everything. Yes, Paul. We want to thank today the two presenters that uh, were, were giving the commentating, Vern and John. 
Do we leave any questions out? Do we leave any questions out that anybody was wanting to ask here? One more question. You'll come here, please, on the mic. So, we'll get everybody. I, uh, I, it usually seems like uh, the ones that have problems are like newer callers uh, to fitting the commands into the amount of music. That's usually when they have the problems is they're lagging on the music or they, you know, get behind, you know, when they're doing the commands. They don't seem to get them in when they should be getting them in. And that's usually when they have problems to fitting them into the, into the singing calls. 90%, 90% of the time the callers will be behind the phrase of the music rather than in front of it or right on it. And I think that's what creates most of that kind of problem. Before we leave, did everybody get a handout so everybody's leaving it? We've got a handout to up on the side. Enjoy lunch. We've got some good, good topics still coming up for the rest of the day. Thank you for coming.